Hey everybody, it's Amanda. And Rick. And it's time for our early evening Bible study. Mm -hmm. Hey. It looks awfully bright. I know, I was just looking at that. It, it looks even brighter than I thought. If you actually want to twist that, you can twist it so they're pointing Well, how does it look on your phone? Oh, I'll look. We'll find out. And this is always just, oh no, you look fine. Oh, yeah. Totally fine. Just bright on the screen. It's hard I can barely to uh, look at it. <laughs> look away. Look away. <laughs> you have a glow. It's a godly glow on you. <clears throat> it's my white hair. <laughs> it's your glory. <laughs> <laughs> it is your glory. All right. So um, I'm going to share the links. We'll get started in just a second if this is your first time here. Hello. Welcome. Um, if you want to join us for our weekend Bible study, we would love for you to do that. Be sure to subscribe, uh, go ahead and click the bell to get notifications because we do not do it at a regular time. We just work around his schedule. Um, and like this week, it's kind of early, but you know, we're, we're here is the point. So, um, and I'm going to share the links to our Facebook page and Facebook group, which is also called the Beals Bible study. And both of those. So if you want to join us over there, you can also be notified there. So, and if you're in the Bible study group, you can chat with all the other folks from the Bible study, leave prayer requests and other things like that. So it's a good place to go if you are on Facebook. Um, otherwise, and we've been, I've been trying to share encouraging verses too mm -hmm. lately. I've been really trying to work on using it more. I hope you guys have been seeing that. So, oh, yay. Hello, Lori. So glad you're here. She said, first time getting you. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. See, you, ne you never know. We're just going to pop up and be live whenever we can. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to share these links. We'll get started here in just a second. <clears throat> so my wife was live last night <clears throat> without me. I was. <clears throat> so I was asleep. Yes, you were. Now, now it, it would have been fine if she had, had uh, awakened me. I, I would have come and been live. But she she let me sleep. You needed it. So so for one, I appreciate that. But at the same time, I miss being here. Mm -hmm. uh, oddly enough, so I think we're early tonight because because I I, I slept early last night mm -hmm. and hard too. I was out. Mm -hmm. I went out like a rock. But I woke up early. When like, he says early, it was like two a.m. Two a.m. I'm drinking coffee, and I've been up since two a.m. So the crash is coming. So so we haven't we haven't eaten yet. Yeah. We we still need to eat. And she she was afraid that after I ate, I, I would I'm gonna the fall crash. apart. Mm -hmm. So so that's that's why we're it's like while early. we're waiting. She wanted to catch me while while I, I, I still have my eyelids open. See, normally he gets off a little later <clears> on <throat> Sunday. So I planned dinner in the crock pot for a certain time and then that didn't work because <laughs> he got off earlier and I was like, well, let's just do the Bible study. <clears throat> so here we are. Now, my wife was live last night. Mm -hmm. And at some point she had said that if I had any thoughts, I would mention them tonight. I did. But I'll make a point to say this. I thought my wife did a wonderful job. And I have no thoughts. None to add. <laughs> no additional thoughts. But... I would encourage y'all, if, if you haven't watched it already, to watch last night's video. You went over Pentecost and such. Yes, Shavuot. <clears throat> but I will say this. Which I, is today, by the way. The views, yes, yes. The views were, were fairly good on that video, so I'd say people watched it. Well, they were wondering where you were. Is that it? I think that's what it was. The, 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 yeah, she, she finally got rid of him. No. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies are taking over. They were like, no. "Is Rick okay?" <laughs> Did anyone mention me? Uh, not in the comments. No, exactly. <laughs> not in the comments, but <clears throat> you know. The 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 carnal ones had their fingers crossed. They they were so sad that they missed you. They clicked off and they didn't even write a comment. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I've shared the links. Okay, we can go. We're ready to go. So, so since Rick decided that I'd covered it and he didn't have anything he wanted to add. He felt like he was just, you know, basically reiterate everything I said. He thought we should just continue with Psalm 18 because we got a lot of Psalms to go through. And and <laughs> I don't know if you, did you mention that today? What? Well, the Psalm 18. We, we actually started it last week. We did. Okay. I'm just bringing that up mm -hmm. because it's been a week since we've been together mm -hmm. doing the Psalms. Yeah. So, so we're not, I guess you'll read the whole thing. 
Or yeah. are you playing? Well, <clears throat> yeah, I may as well. <laughs> I was going to at least skip the first six verses because it's 50 verses and we totally already fine. went over the first six. What was the first six what we did last time? Yes. I, I could not remember where we stopped. Yeah, I, I remember. I know exactly where we are. <clears throat> Hi, oh. Sarah. <clears throat> I just want Sarah, to... we keep seeing you on Facebook, by the way. I just want you to know that. Yeah, keep seeing you. <laughs> you are popping At up your all work, the time. Fa Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, what was I saying? I had to fix my skirt. Sorry. 18 versus we got through verse six. Oh, well, I'm not going to go into all the details. Say something else. My wife was actually in a, a ladies, uh, um, uh, uh, not study school, it's a Sabbath thing, uh -huh. but, but uh, a Bible study mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, yesterday mm -hmm. with ladies and salvation was brought up mm -hmm. and there was a, a portion of the room of ladies um, felt very strongly that you could lose your salvation. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's not in the Bible. Uh, we talk about salvation a lot on this channel mm -hmm. and we talk about the um, um, eternal security, the fact that you have the assurance of your salvation, that you can know that you know that you're saved and that you're eternally saved. Everlasting life doesn't end. If it, if it ended, it would be temporary life, not everlasting life. And you get it at the moment you trust Christ, not when you die. Mm -hmm. So, so again, another reason you can't lose your salvation. Mm -hmm. When you believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you're given everlasting life. It happens at the moment you're saved. And if you lost it somewhere before you died, it would not have been everlasting because that life ended. Mm -hmm. No, it's everlasting. It continues on and on and on. And my point is this. So she's in a room with ladies and they were arguing with the, the teacher uh, uh, about the fact that they believed that you could lose your salvation again. You can't. Okay. But the point that I was making, finally, mm -hmm. is that even though we cover salvation a lot, some of you may groan and think, ah, he's talking about salvation again. But the reason I do that, it's not because I can't think of something else to say. But the fact is, I've seen it many times and I've heard of it in situations where I wasn't even there, that even though you can talk about salvation a million times, there's still one or two or three or four who it, it like goes right over their head. They still, it, it goes right over their head that it's just trusting faith in Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and that it lasts forever. Mm -hmm. Someone, even though they hear it a million times, they still want to put some work salvation in it. They still want to think, well, you, you maybe you can lose it. Mm -hmm. So my, my point is that that's why we go over it again and again and again and again, because sometimes we have new people that they've never heard it. And then sometimes we have older people and they've heard it a million times, but they've yet to truly trust in it mm -hmm. and it's hindering them. Uh, so anyway, so that's why we bring it up. You, you'll be amazed. It, once you start sharing your faith, maybe you already are. I hope you are. You'll come across people. And you've talked to them 10 times, 20 times, 30 times about simple salvation. And, and it's so simple. You've laid it out very biblically and just as simple as the Bible gives it. And they'll still look at you after 30 times of hearing it mm -hmm. with questions. So you just believe or, or, or after they get saved. So so you can lose this thing. Right. And, and you'll have to you know go through it again. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my, my encouragement is to stick with the Bible and keep giving them the Bible because mm -hmm. the best way to separate truth and error is just give them the truth. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people cling to what is false because they don't know enough truth. Mm -hmm. So if you just stick with the Bible, it'll it'll connect all those dots. The Holy Spirit will see to that. Mm -hmm. So my point is that just keep giving out uh, uh, scripture to people but 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 you will be amazed perhaps mm -hmm. that there are a lot of people there's a lot of people out there that 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 totally miss how simple salvation is mm -hmm. and how the the fact that it lasts forever okay um i'm glad the lord made it simple one of the reasons i think the lord made it simple is because it's a simple plan and we still it, we still complicate can't it. grasp it mm -hmm. You follow? Imagine if the Lord made it as complicated as rocket science. You, you it know? was like algebra. Exactly. Yeah. So anyway, that's my thing. Well, good. I'm I'm glad you shared that. Yeah, I I was I was thinking just just simply. You always talk about how there's so many eternals and everlastings in the Bible that it just doesn't even make sense that it wouldn't be either eternal or everlasting. And I was just thinking, you know, just a few simple verses that that everyone knows. It's not. 
you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have eternal life unless mm -hmm. they sin to this extent. You know, it doesn't say that. It just says, shall have eternal life, you know, it, the, the, shall not perish, shall, but have eternal life. The idea, it's, it's definitive. You know what I mean? Um, it, it, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mm -hmm not until they do something wrong. You know what I mean? There's, there, it's just definitive. Mm -hmm. um, and there's so much more we could say about that. It's its own study, but. And, and, and another thought, um, I, I'm not giving too many details tonight, but I'm just going to keep giving you a little bits and pieces here for the, for a while. Uh, we actually have another channel that we've been working on and it's a channel. We uh, told you we were building a ministry. Yeah. A it's ago. a channel primarily. Did I say that right? Primarily mm -hmm. uh, centered around evangelism, giving out the gospel, seeing people get saved by just simply trusting in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. um, there's no content on it at this point. There, yes, it's, there's really uh, it's even to say there, there's no point to even look it up just yet. <laughs> well, you could but, if you wanted to. But I am saying there is a channel that we are working on for just evangelism. Mm -hmm. Now, someone out there is going to say, are you going to stop doing this channel? No. No. My wife and I, it's still in the planning uh, phase. So so you, you please forgive us if, it, if it's tweaked a little bit here and there as, as we get, get it going. As with everything we do. Yes. <laughs> I said a few weeks ago when we went to just the two events mm -hmm. on the weekend, I said that I wanted to do some recorded content throughout the week. Mm -hmm. I still want to do that, but... As this week has gone on, it, it, since we've been, this channel that we're working on has just kind of stalled. And I, and it, it, I was inspired to, to, to get it going by doing the material that I want to do on that channel mm -hmm. for evangelism purposes. Mm -hmm. And the way it is in my mind, the way it would work, and I think it would be good, is to have the one channel for evangelism. Yes. And this channel for discipleship teaching and training mm -hmm. you know somebody gets saved if they're not in a church yet what do they do yeah how do you know how to find a good church where do you go what's what is now that i'm a christian what does that all mean mm -hmm. so that's why, why i like this channel mm -hmm. it's 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 for the discipleship the early teaching the training and, and, and kind of a bridge for people as they look for a church mm -hmm. kind of a, a, like a friend to churches mm -hmm. kind of deal so, so that's why I like the two channels. They kind of mesh. Uh, uh, we talk to somebody on this channel. They, 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 they have a burden for somebody. They want some tools on how to lead somebody to the Lord. Mm -hmm. We can direct them to the evangelism channel. Mm -hmm. Somebody gets saved on the evangelism channel or through that channel. We can direct them to this channel, the teaching discipleship. So I kind of like them. They, they, in my mind, at least, they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. All right. two, two different purposes, but still all about giving out God's word. So I, I like it. It's called worldwide evangelism. Just so you know. Yes. But again, if you like, look it up, we have it on Facebook. We have it on YouTube and we have it on Instagram yep. and Twitter, frankly, but still really no content just yet. <sighs> Not yet. We're working on it, but so but many things to work actually on. we have, we have a, 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 a very little launch date. Yes. Yeah, she's doing this, but we're thinking within a month or so. Yeah. Within a month or so, or up to one month from now, as we record and get some things tweaked, mm -hmm. that it will be more of a constant throughout the week thing. Yeah. Okay. And 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 just throw it out there too. We're this is the Beals Bible study, and I'll continue to do it every time with my wife, uh, for the most part. The worldwide evangelism, for the most part, I'll let you know I'll be doing it pr pretty much be just great. me. Mm -hmm. So anyhow. That's enough said. Okay. Psalm 18. Okay. Psalm 18. We're 15 minutes in, so I want to want to get to the Bible. Well, you wanted me to chit-chat. <laughs> this is what happens when he takes a day off. He's still got to talk. Okay. It took a week, a week off. We haven't been here, I haven't been here since last Sunday. Psalm 18. I'm more awake now. It, it was right to go live before I ate. I know. <laughs> Psalm 18 is Cause, cause 50 I, verses. I think after I eat, I'm going to be a different Richard. Psalm 18 is 50 verses. We only did the first six verses last week. Uh -huh. um, I, I usually read 
whatever passage we're going through. Yes. And, uh, and I don't know if I want to read the whole 50 verses today because I, what I think I'm going to do is just read, just read a few verses. Yeah, just read what, what you think we're going to cover. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going and to read. If we cover more, you could, we could read later. Exactly. Excuse I'm going to read the beginning part that we talked about last week, just to kind of give it as part of the overview leading into the next section. So I am going to start at verse one. We're only going to go a few verses in, um, and we ha- I have one specific thing that my it's my goal to cover today, so we'll see if we can do that. <laughs> so anyway, um, so if you're at Psalm 18, I hope you have your Bible. We're going to start at verse 1, and it says, To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song, in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and a fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet and he rode upon a cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens and the highest gave his voice hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them, and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of water were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils. Let's see. Yeah, I'll read a little bit more. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he delivered me from my strong enemy, and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. So we'll stop there at uh, verse 19. So the first six verses, just a little quick overview. um, It kind of explains what the circumstance was that David had been delivered from his enemies, particularly from the hand of Saul. And he is just really thankful. He, He has this psalm that he wrote, the song that um, he's just expressing how grateful he is for who the Lord is. And we talked last week, the first six verses about how he just emphasizes who God is, his goodness. We talked about how it's it's very much like the adoration section mm-hmm. of prayers and the idea that, you know, he really just appreciated who God was and called upon him. And that was just that first six verses. And then we get to what I wanted to cover today, which was God's response to David, because here you have a man who has gone through very difficult circumstances. And um, in the midst of those circumstances, he has such great faith in the Lord and who he is, that he's his fortress and his buckler and that he can depend on him, that he cries out to the Lord, even in the midst of these difficult situations. And the Lord's response is swift. And I mentioned even last week when I talked, when I read through this, that this, this section here is another one of those that reminds me of a cartoon because it's so descriptive. You can almost picture it in your head. So when it says like, you know, smoke is coming out of his nostrils, I'm picturing like those cartoons where you see, literally see smoke coming out of different characters. Mm-hmm. You know, no, you know how they have like that, um, like they're, the, it goes red from top to from bottom to top mm-hmm. and then smoke comes out of their ears and like a whistle blows like Woo, you know what I'm saying like that's that's literally how I picture it and the thing is is that you know it's it, it's good to have it so descriptive because when it's so descriptive like that you can almost feel it yeah. you know what I mean you really you can start to really see how God works in our lives. And you can almost feel it in your own life when you're in a situation that's challenging. Like you you can almost 
feel like, you know, something is bothering you. You're going to the Lord about it. And he's like turning red, <laughs> you know, he's like some, uh, this is just a side note. Rick is very protective. I've mentioned this before. He's, he's an excellent protector and provider and caring for his family. And there have been certain situations where people have been hurtful or offended members of our family. And I, I Rick kind of has this thing too, where he's like a cartoon character. He'll just go red, you know, and you can almost see smoke coming out of his ears because he, I mean, he, he loves his family and he wants to protect them and care for them. And so I just got high blood pressure. <laughs> <laughs> But the idea, you know what I'm saying? Like I can see, I can see it. And I can feel it. I, so if I'm telling Rick about the situation, I can see that he's getting more and more mad. And, and I kind of feel that about the war. Like he's, the, he, we're upset and he's, he's protecting us. He's like, no, oh, no, they didn't, you know, <laughs> and, then, and then he comes running. So, so it has this great description about how he bowed the heaven and he rode upon a cherub, right? He's like racing to get there you know, um, but like physically, you know, the idea that he is physically bodily going to be present there in that moment, you know, and, and the world is going like the idea of the heavens bowing, you know, have you, have you ever seen something with so much weight on it that it just like bends? And this is kind of the fury with which the Lord is coming down that it's even bowing the heavens. Like, I mean, he is serious about this thing. Um, so there, there's so much description here. I'm not going to go over the whole thing by myself. I'm going to let Rick talk for a minute. But again, it's just the idea. As you read through this, I just want you to start to picture it in your mind. And remember that this, yes, he loves David. And this is something he did for David. But this is what he'll do for you. So those moments when you get upset for yourself, you know when the Bible says vengeance is mine, I'll repay, saith the Lord. And sometimes you think, oh, you know, I... I'm so mad at this circumstance. I'm going to go take care of it. Like you're going to do anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like anything that you do is going to be significant. You ain't going to bow no heavens. <laughs> you know, there's nothing that you're going to do that the Lord couldn't do better. You know, so if you picture him like this, it might actually help you to be able to actually pray for them. Have you ever seen somebody like you're mad about a situation? Like this, sometimes this, I've, I've seen this happen in my life. I'm mad at somebody. <laughs> I tell somebody else, they get more mad than I even am. And they want to, and then I'm like, oh, no, 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 it's not that bad. It's okay. You know, it's, you almost kind of pity someone when you know the Lord's coming after him. It's like, no, 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 no. It's okay, Lord. You, And then you can start to pray for your enemies you know, because you can pity them a little more. If you see the Lord coming down with his chair, with the nostrils, it's like, but, but Lord bless them. <laughs> you know? So anyway, I just, I, I think this is a helpful picture of who God is and how he really does care about his people. And he is willing to do some serious things to make sure they're cared for. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, so, verse six, there was a call, mm -hmm. a call of faith, a call for help, mm -hmm. uh, noticing you have enemies, noticing there's a threat against you. Mm -hmm. uh, a wise person who knows the Lord understands that they can find much help in the Lord when they call. Mm -hmm. Uh, funny people we are sometimes that we are saved. Many of us, we know the Lord, mm -hmm. yet in trouble, many times we forget to cry out to him. Mm -hmm. or we'll go ask anyone else that we can find, everyone else. Mm -hmm. But but sometimes we, we are uh, forgetful about calling on the one who we called on for salvation. Mm -hmm. You know, salvation means rescue. And when you call on the name of the Lord, he'll rescue you from the penalty of sin. But you know what? He, you know, there's plenty of other rescues in life. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you, you need to be rescued from a financial woe or, or, or a, uh, illness, a physical woe. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord can help. He can bless. And, and we, when we find ourselves in trouble, we ought to know. And uh, it's an act of faith that mm -hmm. we put, you know, our feet in motion and we actually seek him in prayer mm -hmm. when we are in trouble. Mm -hmm. All I have to say this, pray folks, pray. We're all in trouble at times, at times. Mm -hmm. Pray, seek the Lord's face, okay? In distress, he called on the Lord, okay? And folks, this is Old Testament. Calling on the Lord is not a new thing. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, they called on the Lord in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. All right, it is always right to call on the Lord. Uh, and I wrote down this, or this was my thought. Okay, there was a call of faith on the Lord, and then I circled in verse seven. Then, mm-hmm. okay, verse six, I called upon the Lord. Verse seven, then mm-hmm. the earth shook and trembled, and so on and so forth. The Lord is omnipresent. He's always there. The Lord hasn't gone anywhere. Some people think the Lord is like a million miles away. No, he's right there with you. He's waiting on you to pray. He's waiting on you to call out with faith. Mm-hmm. Um, God, When you call with faith, the Lord works. I wrote down this because I want to make this point. The Lord is not a genie in the bottle. He's not, you know, every, a lot of people have seen or they got that thought of Aladdin or something mm-hmm. where you get the lamp and you and then you get your three wishes. That's not the Lord. And don't ever think the Lord is like that. That, that that's, that's not biblical. Mm-hmm. The Lord is not a genie in the bottle, but he does care about us. Yes. He loves us and he responds when we call on him with faith. Mm-hmm. What he wants is our faith. Mm-hmm. And when, you've, when you call on him for help with great faith, knowing that he can and will help, mm-hmm. the Lord responds to that. Like a father would respond to a child of his who called on him. Mm -hmm. I raised kids in this house and other houses that we've lived in. (laughs) Same kids though. And uh, when they, when they had some kind of trouble and they called, well, I responded Mm -hmm. because they're my child. Mm -hmm. When they called for help for you, you responded Mm -hmm. because they're your child. Mm -hmm. God's the same way. You, when you, if you're his child tonight and you have trouble and you call on him for help, he responds. Mm -hmm. OK, now now sometimes I'll say this, it might not be in the way you think he'll respond, mm-hmm. but what, where, whatever way, whichever way he responds, that's the right way because that's the way God responded. Mm-hmm. OK, sometimes we want God to do this and instead he does that. Mm-hmm. But if God did that, ultimately, we may not even understand it right now, but you have to. It's a faith thing. That was the right move. Mm-hmm. OK. So we, it's it, even that, even the way God responds is an act of trust or, or an opportunity for us to trust him. Yeah. But go ahead. I don't want, I, I want the highlight of what I said to be this. Mm-hmm. If you find yourself in trouble, call on the Lord with faith. He's there. He cares and he will respond. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think verses seven through nine. You get that initial response, like just his initial gut reaction. And the thing is, I like I just mentioned, the gut reaction is what literally shakes the, the heavens and the earth. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, this this is not like sometimes if you talk about someone being mad and like shaking the earth, that's one thing. But this is God literally so angry that it's shaking the earth. It says then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills were moved and shaken because he was wroth. Uh, and then it talks about the smoke coming out of his nostrils, fire out of his mouth. Can I say his... something about verse 7? Yeah, but let me say verse okay. 9. Too, I was about done. And the idea of, the, again, the heavens bowing and coming down and darkness being under his feet. But the idea is that his, his, his initial just gut reaction is enough to shake the whole world. So, I mean, it's, it's not like he's, he's not paying attention or he doesn't really care. You know, it says he was wroth. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's like furious. That's like, to me, this is like a mama bear. So go ahead. <clears throat> I just want to say that. So the Lord responds in verse seven. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it talks about the earth being shook. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I think all of us understand that the earth is a, a big ball. Mm-hmm. Right. We, we've heard of earthquakes and things like that. Folks, that's something only God can do. Mm -hmm. You follow? This is an example of the creator Mm -hmm. being in control of his creation. Mm -hmm. Some some folks think God's not in in control anymore, Mm -hmm. that he's lost power. No, God is still in control. And as his creation down here, Mm -hmm. he being the creator can do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. 
and the Lord can shake this earth. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Lord can just, this earth would be gone if that's what the Lord wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, God can do anything he wants and, and God does not need us. We need him and we need to understand that. But the earth shook. Uh, it talks about the foundations uh, of, of the hills. Yeah, the hills being moved. And I thought of this. What can God truly do? Things that we think are unmovable. Mm -hmm. The Lord can move them. Mm -hmm. There are problems that we have in life that sometimes we don't even pray about because we think it's unchangeable. Mm -hmm. They're unmovable. There, there are some things that we go through that we think, I'm not even going to pray about that. Nothing can happen. Mm -hmm. You know, folks, phooey. You should pray. The Lord can do all kinds of things. He can move a mountain. Mm -hmm. He can move something that you don't think can be moved. Mm -hmm. and I'll tell you something else. It, even if he doesn't move said mountain, mm -hmm. perhaps maybe he'll change your heart so you can deal with with said mountain. It's like so, another piece of rock. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes there are two mountains. There's a mountain you're looking at and then there's a mountain in your heart. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have problems in life and, and maybe we will pray to the Lord that he will change the problem. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in his wisdom, he knows what's best. Sometimes he may move, remove the problem in your life, or sometimes he may let that problem stay, but he'll change your heart about it. So you'll see that that problem is not as problematic as you thought it was mm -hmm. and you can go through that thing with grace sometimes he'll he'll remove the problem sometimes he'll just do a work in your heart so you can deal with that problem like paul when when, when the lord refused to remove the thorn so he said your grace is sufficient mm -hmm. the lord left the problem but changed paul's heart about the problem mm -hmm. and both are good we just have to trust the lord's wisdom of which one he does i think the key is that you know, he between the verses seven through nine, uh, he's capable of moving heaven and earth mm -hmm. to take care of you. And that's kind of like a, a common expression. There's, oh, I'd move heaven and earth to do this. Right. We, and that's an expression for us. But for God, it's literal. Mm -hmm. You know, he is capable of doing unimaginable things to meet our needs. Um, but can I say one more thing about that section? Mm -hmm. Well, you probably have. You, you only talk about seven. So. I'm still on the seven. Well, we're going to have to take it in chunks if we're going to get through verse 20. <laughs> so don't take it one verse at a time. Well, let me just... Go ahead the, I'm it. taking this one slow, and then I'll, 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 I'll try to do the others faster. Okay. So, the you know, he they called on him, or he called on him. Mm -hmm. With faith, the Lord responded. Uh -huh. As the creator, his creation shook. Mm -hmm. Okay? Something that was thought to be unmovable. The Lord can do anything he wants. And but why did the Lord respond in such a way? It says because of his 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 wrath. Yeah, really. He was wrath. He, 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 you know, and the thought that I was getting at is that, folks, the Lord loves us. If you're his child tonight, well, he loves the whole world. But if you're his child tonight, he has a special fondness and affection for you mm -hmm. because you actually belong to him. Mm -hmm. You're not just his creation. You're his child. Everybody is God's creation. But not everybody is his child. Only those who have trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and been, been born again are God's family. Mm -hmm. They have been born again by the new birth, been born by faith into his family. Okay. And the Lord has a special bond with you if you're a believer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and when, when someone rises up against you, mm -hmm. it angers the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord is very protective of his children. Mm -hmm. OK, like and you would be about yours. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I remember one time we were at, at a place and, and there were there were kids playing already, like football or something. Uh -huh. and, and and one of the kids in, and our kids were out there. Uh -huh. Our boys were Brian and Ricky and they were younger. And one of the kids kind of got in Brian's face that he was acting up. And I tell you, they, they were like teenage year. You know, they, it wasn't like little kids. They were they were rough. Everyone thinks Brian's so quiet. Brian's the wrong one. <laughs> so, so 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 Brian got upset. Uh huh. 
And and frankly, I got upset. Uh-huh. We were watching this thing, mm-hmm. and I immediately grabbed the the, the car door mm-hmm. and, and 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 just pulled that handle to the point it was going to break off. And I was going, I was heading out of that car, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. wrath. Mm-hmm. And you, I think, grabbed this arm uh-huh. and said, "Rick, let him handle it." Yeah. <laughs> and we, I waited a second, and 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 and, and they all did. They handled it, yeah. and, and it it didn't last very long. Yeah. And it probably would have been a lot bigger and probably worse if I had jumped yes, out. Yes, it would have been. Angry dad. Yes. But so I'm glad I didn't. But my, my, my point in saying that it was my gut response mm-hmm. was somebody got in, in, in our kid's face and, and I was immediately like a lion going at him. Yeah. You know? It was a good thing you were there. Yeah, I know. That was the Lord had you grab my. If I didn't think Brian could handle it, I I would have let you ride. (laughs) It wasn't that I doubted Brian. I just no, I know. There's just some reaction. There's just something in me when I see something. I I feel like I got to get in there. (laughs) So anyhow, but but anyway, but that's a good point for the Lord here. All right, God's people when they're in trouble, God has this need or this desire to get in there Mm -hmm. and, and 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 to help. You remember when we did, we were, we've been in the Old Testament forever mm-hmm. when, when we were talking about uh, uh, in the Pentateuch that the Lord fought for Israel mm-hmm. and God fights for us. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, but it mentions his wrath and it talks about what, what he can do in the midst of his wrath, shaking the earth, removing the hills. And I wrote down beside that in my Bible, you don't want to meet an angry God. I was going to say that. You know what it remind me of? There's this preacher that, that Rick likes, mm-hmm. and he tells the story about not wanting to be in, in the wrath of God. Mm-hmm. And he talks about when you're in the deep displeasure of your wife. Yeah, yeah. Is that, and and I, I, I was thinking about that. <laughs> I, you could probably quote it better than I could. But he just says, you know, have you ever, have you ever, he, I think he starts with telling the deep displeasure of your father. Mm-hmm. Like if you've ever been in a place where your father is really mad at you, mm-hmm. you're like you, you've done wrong and you know it, and you're dealing with your father's displeasure. That's not a good place to be. But then, then he said, you know, what about the deep displeasure of your wife? And he basically said he'd rather be about anywhere else yep. than deal with the deep displeasure of his wife. Rick would agree with that. <laughs> yeah, keep talking. There's a reason the Bible says that it's better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than in a house with an angry woman. <laughs> You know, yeah. well, why? I think it says a wide house with an angry woman, but um, but just where can you go to get away from an angry God? Mm-hmm. You can. You don't want to meet an angry God. What a motivator to be saved mm-hmm. and and have peace with God. Mm-hmm. So that, that's what it is. The Bible says, you know, for all have sinned. We're all born sinners, mm-hmm. and because we're born sinners, we're, that sin separates us from God. Mm-hmm. And when you trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, mm-hmm. He is the bridge to the Father. Mm-hmm. He said, "I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by Me." Mm-hmm. If you want to get to the Father tonight, you got to go through the Son. Okay, He is the bridge to the Father tonight, mm-hmm. and it's through Him that we can have peace with God. Mm-hmm. Okay, if, if you cannot have peace with God without the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. your works will never give you peace with God. Your works, they don't merit peace with God, but our faith in the only one who can help, Jesus Christ, will give us that peace that we need with God. And through that peace, we will become his children. Mm-hmm. That story that he was, she was just talking about, um, <clears throat> the text was actually John chapter 3. People know John chapter three because of John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, mm-hmm. that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Mm-hmm. In other words, if you if you don't want to perish, be separated from God forever. For, you know, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you'll have everlasting life. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just that simple. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, everlasting life means believing in Christ. Perishing without God means don't believe in Christ. Okay, but the the text I wanted to read was verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So, and and the The point was... The abiding wrath of God, that's right. And and abiding or abideth means uh, continual. It means that... Uh, someone who is not saved tonight, they have the wrath of God on their life tonight. Mm-hmm. 
because honestly, sin is what brings you the wrath of God. And if that sin is yeah. forgiven, God loves the world, but he hates there. sin. Mm -hmm. understand, understand that for someone who may think God is evil tonight, God's not evil. God is love. Mm -hmm. God loves the sinner, but he hates our sin. Mm -hmm. He hates it so much that Christ had to go to the cross and die for it. Okay. But understand this, that the wrath of God abides continually on the heads of every sinner that doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and savior. Mm -hmm. uh, if you trust Jesus Christ as Lord and savior, you know, the Lord will give you everlasting life through the because grace, you have forgiveness. <laughs> forgiveness. Um, but if you refuse to trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, based on verse 36 of John chapter three, then the wrath of God will abide on you forever. When you leave this life, if you've not trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the wrath of God will be on you forever and ever and ever. And you'll never have an op another opportunity to be saved. That's why the Bible teaches that today is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. You don't put off salvation. You get saved now. Mm -hmm. Who in the world in, in a house that was burning down would put, a, put off being rescued? Mm -hmm. You would want to get out of that house as soon as possible. If you were in water, sinking, getting ready to drown, who would put off being rescued by a lifeguard? You would want to be pulled out of the water as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. If you could realize tonight that you are a sinner separated from God, the wrath of God abides on you because God hates sin. Mm -hmm. But with a one-time faith decision, you could trust Christ as Lord and Savior mm -hmm. and have peace with God immediately mm -hmm. because of the blood of Christ. Why would you put that off? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot to trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and there's a lot of blessing that comes with it. But th that blessing is covered by a couple things. Forgiveness, mm -hmm. a guaranteed home in heaven, mm -hmm. and, and the knowledge, the reality that you will become God's child when you trust Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Those three things right there, uh, good motivator just to trust Jesus Christ. If I, if I trust Christ, what will happen? You'll become God's child. It, when you die, you don't have to worry. You have a guaranteed home in heaven. Mm -hmm. You're never separated from God. And you don't have to have guilt in your heart tonight. The Lord offers total, complete forgiveness of your sin. Mm -hmm. So trust Jesus Christ if you've never trusted him. You'll never regret it. We're going to move on. <laughs> Verses 10. Uh, 10 through 15. I'll say this though, verse 9. I'm, just quick thought. I okay. wanted to say it. In verse 9, it says, uh, He bowed the heavens also and came down. I just want to say this that the Lord came down. Yep. Personally. Personally. You know who Jesus Christ is? Jesus Christ is God. Mm -hmm. He said in John 10 30, I and my Father are one. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is not. Not a distant God. Yeah. A little G God. He's not just a teacher or a good man. He's not sent to us from God, ceasing to be God himself. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches about the Godhead. Mm -hmm. The father is God. Jesus Christ is God. And the Holy Spirit is God. Not three gods. There's one God in three persons, mm -hmm. three forms of the same God. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is God. Mm -hmm. When we read that verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3, 16, Knowing this, that Jesus Christ is God, you can understand John 3, 16 like this, for God loved you so much that he himself came down here to die on a cross for us. Mm -hmm. God came down personally to sinful man, put on flesh and went to a cross to die in our place, shedding his blood so we could find forgiveness of our sin. For the Bible teaches without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. There's no forgiveness of sin without the shedding of blood. God became man so he would have blood to shed for us. God loves you. Okay. And he, the Bible says here in Psalm 18 that he came down. The Lord personally comes to us when you are in need. If you ask the Lord for help tonight, you could you can have this assurance that he himself is talking to you. Why in the world would you go to a confessional booth or something and talk to a priest when you can talk directly to God? You don't Especially have to talk. When the Bible specifically says you can go to him directly. Exactly. And you don't need another man. I don't need a substitute. Mm -hmm. I don't want somebody that's just as sinful as I am. Mm -hmm. You know, two sinners trying to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. You can go directly to the Lord tonight. The one who knows you better than you know yourself. 
who made you, knows everything about you, and loves you more than anyone else ever could or would, mm -hmm. go to him tonight. If you got trouble in your heart tonight, go to him. If you're looking for a savior, someone to help you, a Lord, a God, go to him and call on Christ. If you are a believer and you are struggling with some help or, or some trouble tonight, go to him. Go to the one who can give you help. Go to the Lord personally. He'll come to you. Okay. Interesting thing you said, and I'm just going to throw it out there just as a little tidbit and get your thought on it. Okay. You're talking about God being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three three parts of one God, mm -hmm. right? And that's one of those things that always confuses people. But do you remember when I was telling you and I told you guys yesterday about, um, we were talking about how one of the things the Talmud says, and it's, of course, the only time I have ever, ever on this channel ever talked about the Talmud because it is not the Bible and I'm not giving it the credit for being the Bible. However, there was something that I heard someone say yesterday and I thought it was I thought it was really good and it was valuable and it was helpful to me. And you guys seem to find it to be um, helpful too. the idea that when God spoke, he speaks in such a way that whoever hears it, hears it in their language because God's speech is divine. Right. So he doesn't have to speak Spanish or German or English or, you know, all the different languages we speak, mm -hmm. but he just speaks and we hear him because he's God. And I, th I thought this is actually kind of helps me understand his omnipresence. You know, that's a fancy word that means he's present everywhere. Right. So how a lot of people question, how can he be father, son, and Holy spirit and still be one God? Well, because first of all, he can be anywhere doing anything, but he has particularly placed himself in certain aspects to be a certain thing at a certain place. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because that that is how he's decided to translate himself. We talked about his words being translated, but this is his presence being translated around the world, right? So he can be in heaven and in earth at the same time in the form of the Holy Spirit. He can be in Rick and in me at the same time, um, again, in the form of the Holy Spirit. And at the same time, he can be around us. You know, he can be at his, <laughs> he can be in one place and at his right hand in Christ. Mm -hmm. So the Lord, um, just the same way that his speech can be everything at once, he himself can be everything at once. And I just, I was thinking about that and I thought I'd share that. And that's not necessarily anything doctrinal. It's just a thought that I had in this moment. <clears throat> I always go back to the, um, the example of water. Mm -hmm. uh, water is water. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, water can be liquid. It can be steam and it can be ice. Mm -hmm. But when you break it down, it's all water. Mm -hmm. The liquid is water, mm -hmm. the steam is water, the ice is water, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, three forms of the same thing, all right? So you have God, mm -hmm. all right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three forms of the same God, mm -hmm. okay? The Father is just as much God as the Son. The Son is just as much God as the Father. And the Holy Spirit, again, is just mm -hmm. as much God as the Father and the Son, mm -hmm. okay? Three forms of the same God. And you say... Is that what the Bible says? Yeah, the Bible says yes. The Bible teaches the Godhead. It says that there are three that bear record in heaven. And the Bible also says the, that the three are one. They are co-equal, one in the same. Mm -hmm. They have different uh, uh, roles. roles mm -hmm. Okay. But same God. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but the, the Son, Jesus Christ, submits to the Father. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Now you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's role is to lift up Christ. Because mm -hmm. even Christ said that he would send the comforter, and he said that he would not speak of himself. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of churches out there that, that speak and make way too much about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that it's wrong to speak down or, or, or make light of God, okay? Because the Holy Spirit is God. But my point You're not is... saying that it, it's right to make light of god i'm not saying it's light to make i'm not saying it's right i'm not saying <laughs> it's right to make light of the holy spirit yeah. my point is is that who do you put the highlight on mm -hmm. the holy spirit doesn't want you to put the highlight the spotlight on the on him mm -hmm. the holy spirit's not it the holy spirit's a him mm -hmm. it's god mm -hmm. but the holy spirit has a job mm -hmm. the holy spirit's job is to lift up Christ. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so the father, you know, when when Christ was baptized by John the Baptist, he said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. This this Jesus who's going to go around telling people that he's God. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. Mm -hmm. This the father already knew everything Jesus was going to do. And he said, this is my son and I'm pleased by him. Mm -hmm. So you have the father making much about Christ, Mm -hmm. you know, and then you have the Holy Spirit who lifts up Christ. Mm -hmm. So you have the Holy Spirit lifting up Christ. You have the Father making a big deal about Christ. So they're all God, but they have different roles. Mm -hmm. Okay? So all that to say this, that if you're in a church and they mention the Holy Spirit way more than they mention Jesus, you have to ask yourself if that is a biblical Bible teaching church. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not saying the Holy Spirit's not God, Mm -hmm. but the Holy Spirit's job is to lift up Christ Mm -hmm. and to help you Follow Christ, not follow the Holy Spirit, but follow Christ. So we're to walk in the Spirit, but after the Lord. Go ahead. Verses 10 to 15. We do five verses at a time here. Um, and that is the Lord. Where are we at? Verses 10 to 15. 10 to 15. Oh, you're you're making a little Yep, because we're, we're going to get through 20. Oh, we're on 50. Yeah, I know. We're at 50 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So you anyway, want to go to 20? Yes. That's not going to happen. No, well, 19 up to 20. Okay. Anyway. Well, 19 is not going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> Verses 10 to 15. Uh, okay, this is the Lord coming. Yes. So we talked about his first reaction, and you said in verse 9, it says, he came. Mm-hmm. This is how he came. It says he rode on the cherub. He flew. Yeah, he flew on the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. He wasn't scared of the dark. There wasn't anything that was going to hinder him. Um, His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds in the sky, which I think, again, picturing this like a cartoon, that's like the Lord, that's his anger just swirling around him. You know what I mean? The brightness that was before him, um, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. So there was some brightness that he was encountering and he just engulfed that and there's hailstones and fire. Just He's just coming in this cloud, right? And uh, it says the Lord thundered in the heavens and the highest gave his voice hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them and he shot lightning and discomfited them. Then the channels of water were seen and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, the blast of the breast of thy nostrils. So again, he's like coming, but he's coming like with his voice out, like, Rawr! you know what I mean? Like, I'm, you know, I'm imagining like a lion, but you know, he's making some kind of sound because his voice is so angry that it's like causing hailstones and kills a fire. And at the same time, he's sending out his arrows. He's scattering everybody. He's got lightning. He's breaking up the water. You know, it says the foundation of the worlds were discovered. Like they, everything was broken apart um, just at the breath of the Lord's nostrils. So this is him coming and like, this is the attack. Mm-hmm. This is him like, oh, oh, no, they didn't. Very much like Rick when, when he said that he was grabbing the handle of the car and he was going. Like, and if you've ever seen somebody angry like that, you can almost see the clouds around them as they're gathering. And usually there's some yelling involved. And usually they're already trying to, you know, start this battle up. But this is the Lord. And he's like, oh, oh, no, where it's going down now. You know, it's the equivalent of like taking out your earrings and, you know, <laughs> so that's what people did when we were in school anyway but but the battle he's like this is it i'm handling this there's no there's no lightness god's not walking up and be like you know hey buddy i I don't know if that was the right thing to say i think people picture they have this picture of christ and, and the lord as always being just you know hey friend it's okay let's talk about this and there's a time for that don't get me wrong but this is a time of danger for his child. And if your child is in danger, you're not coming up to somebody like, friend, it's okay. No, 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 no. You're coming full on like this is not going to happen. And that's mm-hmm. that's how the Lord was. You know, it's the same Christ that, that you know, broke apart the tables, the money changers at the temple. You know, this is the fury, the wrath, as you said, of God coming down. And this is what it looks like. Mm-hmm. So I'm just, my thoughts are scattered, but again, yes, the Lord comes down, uh, verse 14, 
uh, he sent out his arrows. He shot out lightnings. Okay. He is doing it. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, it's a, it's a big, it's a big thought for someone tonight. I believe if you could grasp that, mm -hmm. that the Lord is ready to move and act on your behalf because mm -hmm. he cares for you. He loves you. And, and, and folks, maybe perhaps the only thing that is hindering that mm -hmm. is you haven't called with faith on him. Mm -hmm. Okay. He is ready. The Bible says that if we, we, we draw, if we draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to us. Mm -hmm. And like I've said a thousand times, you're as close to God tonight as you want to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and it, the point that you brought up with the darkness, he, he made darkness his uh, secret place. You know, the Lord is not scared of darkness. Um, this world is very dark today. Uh, I'm talking spiritually. Um, the Lord's not afraid of that. There, there's a lot of people in the last so many years with all of the, all the threats out there, you know, all the, 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 supernatural attacks that people go through each day you, you turn on the news and you've got everything from the active shooters mass shootings terrorism uh all the all the virus scare there's always a thing either it's either it's the covid or it's the monkey pox or it's the this or the that you give it six months there'll be something else every every i mean and that's bible folks the bible says that there will be pestilence you know, there, there's going to be wars in diverse places. We see the Rumors war, like, war. like we see wars popping up all the time where there's the threat of war. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's always a threat of, of a new illness or disease. And this is all fulfillment of the word of God. It's happening. Mm -hmm. OK, but the Lord is not fearful. Mm -hmm. We don't need to be fearful if we know him. OK, he, he's watching our back. He, he we're if, if you're in his will, eh, folks, everything that happens, he he he, he he's allowing it. Folks, and, and, and you also, like I've always, always brought this up, even if we're going through a tough time, just think, if the Lord wasn't preventing things, mm -hmm. it would be so much worse. Because Satan's not playing around. Mm -hmm. If Satan could, we wouldn't even be here tonight. We'd already, all of us, be destroyed. Mm -hmm. The reason that we're not destroyed tonight with an active devil wanting to hurt us so we have God -like with this. all the tension in this world, all the there's enough tension and hate and ungodliness in this world that if God was not preventing the persecution to take us out, we'd, we'd be gone. Mm -hmm. Think, we have read part, big parts of the old Testament. Mm -hmm. This world has hated the nation of Israel for, for centuries. If the Lord was not preventing the destruction, the total destruction of Israel, they'd be already gone. It's just a little pocket of people on this little planet. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're a little group. Mm -hmm. Okay, if the Lord was not preserving his people, mm -hmm. they'd be gone already. Okay, it's obvious that the Lord has said no. The Holocaust would have taken care of it. But the mm -hmm. Lord said no, they're going to continue on. Okay, that's the hand of God. Okay, so... All that to say this, that the Lord is in, uh, he, he, he's in the darkness working, bringing forth the light. Mm -hmm. That's a good way of saying it. He's in the darkness working, bringing forth the light. The Lord, you know, the Bible says that when the Lord was on this earth, he already faced all the temptations that we could face. Okay. That's and Christ. He, yes. And he did it without sin. You know, we, some of us are so fearful of dying, dying. You know, the Lord has already died mm -hmm. and been resurrected. He knows all about death. For someone out there tonight who may be facing an illness or you, maybe you just have anxiety about possibly dying one day, mm -hmm. what a thing to take to the Lord. He's already died. Mm -hmm. He knows all about death. Mm -hmm. You know, I was listening to one preacher one time who said, said, you know, someone's fearful of death. You know, you can go to your best friend, but if they're alive, they, they, don't, they don't know about death. They can't help you. Mm -hmm. But if you know Jesus, you got a friend in Jesus and he's already experienced death. He knows all about it. Mm -hmm. he, he's faced the sting of death and he he came came over the other side and he had the victory. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says it teaches in um, Psalm 21. I don't know what you're what saying. Psalm yet? Is it? 21. <laughs> the, tell you. 23. Man, I forgot. Oh, Psalm 23. Okay. Though, though, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. 
you know, I fear no evil. Mm -hmm. Is that how it goes? And I heard a preacher say it one time, and I never forgot it after they said it, that as a believer, you know, if you know Christ, you have victory over death. Mm -hmm. That that the only thing that can touch you is really the shadow of death Mm -hmm. because the Lord has already gone through it. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that can get us is the shadow. Mm -hmm. But death, but Christ has already had the victory over death. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that can get to us is just the shadow, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, Why? Because the Lord is the God over darkness. You know, he's not the God of darkness, but he has the victory over darkness is what I said. Um, And I hope you got what I was saying there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I I worded all that right. Um, Going through just the other things about the hailstones, the coals of fire and all this stuff. I just wrote down my Bible. The the Lord is unbeatable. There's so many people that think there are nations. There are nations in the Old Testament that we read about that thought they could they could uh, rise up and defeat God Mm -hmm. and God's people. Mm -hmm. And how many times did we read? Have we read in the Old Testament where where Israel they were given a great victory Mm -hmm. and in odds that they shouldn't have had it? Yeah. And the and the key there is Israel. They were given a great victory mm-hmm. because Israel, they, they, man, they could fight till they had no energy left. But the only reason that they were winning these victories mm-hmm. is that the Lord was doing it for them. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, He was the power behind their victory. Mm-hmm. Is my point that God is unbeatable, folks. I like how it talks about His voice in verse thirteen. Uh, that the Lord also thundered in the heavens and the highest gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. I thought it's, I, I circled his voice. There's something about his voice, mm-hmm. you know, out of his voice, uh, you know, comes the word of God. Mm-hmm. And I'll say this, if you heavens want, and earth were made. Exactly. The, the, and Jesus is the word that became flesh. Mm-hmm. But my point is, making much about the voice of God Mm -hmm. as a believer tonight. If I wanted to approach this world that is dark, understanding that the Bible says redeeming the times for the days are evil. Mm -hmm. If I wanted to make a difference in this world for God, Mm -hmm. it's not my voice that can make a difference. It's God's voice. So I don't want to speak until I'm blue in the face uttering all the thoughts of Richard Beal. Mm-hmm. If I truly want to make a difference in this world, I need to know God's word and give this word, this world God's word. Mm-hmm. My point is, is that it, while you go out into this world, if you want to see the Lord work in the lives of others, share God's word because that is what has the power. If you have your own struggles in your life, Become very close to God's word because it's in God's word that you'll find God's power. God's word, the Bible, is not just some regular book. On the shelves behind us, a bunch of regular books written, many of them, by dead people. Okay? But God is alive. He's more alive than we are. And it's a living word that that pierces the heart okay you follow old books written by dead people a living book written by a living god you see the difference this one has power okay these books never need to read them never need to study them they really can't help you they just look good on a shelf make you look smart but this book it can change your life and it can change the life of somebody that you care about Mm -hmm. So know it for your own good and give it out for the good of others, all for the glory of God. Okay. His word. Go ahead. Are you ready to move on? Yep. Okay. So we talked about God's initial reaction. We talked Mm -hmm. about him coming down and, you know, going into that battle for you. Verses 16 and 19 talk about how he delivered David. This is the deliverance portion. So he didn't just come down mad and just like destroying everything. The purpose was to deliver David. And he, he did. It says he sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me 
in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place he de- and he delivered me because he delighted in me. And so the idea is that the Lord is, in the, while he is out there angry, fighting with the enemies, he loves his child. And he's going to deliver him, but he's not just going to deliver him. He's he's making sure that nothing is going to get to him, no matter who's trying to get to him. But also he's delivering to him to a place. Okay, he's bringing him to a large place. It says the idea that and the idea that he's delighting in him. It's he's giving him something good. You know, the enemy's trying to destroy him, but what, what God's going to give him is big and just amazing. You know, he's giving him, um, he's bringing him out into the open. So other people are going to see this great deliverance. And so, you know, don't think as you get through difficult circumstances Mm -hmm. and you need God's deliverance and you call to him and you, you see that he's coming to your rescue. One of the things that you can reassure yourself with is that he, while he's dealing with all of that harshly, he's going to deliver you kindly you know he's not just picking you up and tossing you over there <laughs> you know what i mean he's he's really he's he's taking you into a place that's good mm-hmm. so this is why joseph i think when he was talking to his brothers you know he said you meant it for evil mm-hmm. but god meant it for good and he could see once he was delivered you know in the moment where you're being delivered we talked about daniel in the lion's den that not a good place to be, but Daniel out walking out of the lion's den and being, you know, given great admiration by the king. I mean, that's a whole different circumstance. You know what I mean? Joseph in the pit, in the in the jail as a slave, none of that seemed good. But ultimately, the Lord was bringing him to a palace, mm-hmm. you know. And so in the midst of your difficulty, as you're crying out to the Lord, Know that he's not just delivering you, you know, the people that he delights in, as it says here, he's not just delivering them out of trouble. Not like, do they just barely made it? Like he's giving them great things because he delights in them. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's a, just such a stark contrast between that great anger that comes down on those he has the wrath on and the great giving and delivering and loving that he does to his people who he delights in. Mm-hmm. Um, so they prevented me they confronted me uh, many times enemies will confront you mm-hmm. um, people that oppose you will get right in your face sometimes mm-hmm. and they will seek to hurt you whether if not physically maybe by, by word maybe by deed maybe something that they do uh, but the, it talks about how the Lord was my stay he was my support mm-hmm. I saw a guy today with a minivan and his little hatch Mm. was broken. It wouldn't stay up. So he had a board that he carried. And as he was putting his, uh, his, his uh, groceries and bags into the back of the, um, into the back of the van, he took this board out and he propped up the hatch or the trunk part. So it would stay up and not hit him in the head. Mm -hmm. All right. He, there was a support and the Lord supports us. We want to cave, we want to fall, but the Lord lifts us up, Mm -hmm. you know. He supports us. Uh, That's his power, that's his might, that's his grace. Mm -hmm. Um, He brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord delights in us. He loves us. He cares about us. We've made that point several times now. Uh, And I mean this in no disrespect, but I was thinking of a dolly. Mm. You know, sometimes you'll get something like a refrigerator, a, a washer, a dryer, something big, and, and you just can't pick it up. You know, yeah, I don't care how big and strong and tough you think you are. Mm-hmm. You, 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 you can, you can even if with a running start, you can't budge it. Mm-hmm. Okay. The older I get, I can't budge it. But you get a dolly. You sit it on the dolly. Mm-hmm. That dolly, I tell you what, it, 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 you can all over the place kind of thing. And, you know, sometimes, you know, our flesh is so weak. Our feeble minds are sometimes so 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 distracted that that we can't get where we want to go. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe we desire to be in a better place. Maybe we desire to be closer to the Lord. But sometimes we just sit 
and weeks go by, months go by, years go by, and it seems like nothing is getting better, okay? When you uh, uh, call on the name of the Lord, when you seek the Lord's help, okay, he'll support you. He'll hold you up, and he'll also get you moving. He'll take you where you want. All You know, many times we talk about finding the will of God. Part of finding the will of God for your life is just yielding to where God wants to take you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sometimes we say, I want to find the will of God. I just have to be smarter mm-hmm. and find the will of God. No, you just need to yield to the spirit. Yield to God. Yield to what God wants. Just say, Lord, I- I'm surrendered. Whatever you want, wherever you want me to go, I- I'll do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the Lord will pick you up on that supernatural dolly mm-hmm. and he'll take you right where you want to go. Okay. And that's God's plan for your life. Just as you yield to him, surrender to him, you just trust him and he'll take you all around. Okay. So, and, and folks, that's what I, I believe the psalmist is saying here. You know, I was in a bad place, experiencing in a bad way. Mm-hmm. I called on the Lord. The Lord fought for me. He held me up. He supported me when my enemies were trying to tear me down. And, and he got me out of it. He moved me. And I found God's will for my life. As I yielded to him, he took me through this thing. Mm-hmm. And folks, some someone out there tonight, you just need to call on him. You need to trust him. You need to surrender and yield to him so he can really do a work in your life and move you where he wants you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Part of finding the will of God is yielding. Okay. Understand that. And I'll end it with this. We're talked about how he drew me out of many waters Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you can apply that to troubles, sorrows, all kinds of things, things that wear us down, things that tear us up. You know, when when the Lord, part of his help is he will draw you out of those sorrows. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, it is a true fact that you can be still going through a hard time in the midst of a hard world, Mm -hmm. but still have real joy and peace in your life. Because if you trust in the Lord, he will draw you out of that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's about living on, on you know, taking the high road. Mm-hmm. Well, you take the high road with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you can rejoice in the Lord always. Mm-hmm. Again, I say rejoice. Written in the in the book of Philippians where Paul was in prison. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the, law, the Lord will draw you out. Mm-hmm. He, okay. You can still have joy in the midst of a hard world. Okay. I'll end it with this. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hate hated me, for they were too strong for me. And and I want to take a we can make simple application there to actual physical enemies. But I want to talk about something. All of us have an enemy and it's sin. We have you keep talking. Okay. We have sin. Okay, we are sinners, and that is our great enemy. All right. And I wrote down this, and of course I am talking about salvation, that rescue from the penalty of sin for the grip that sin has on us, okay? The Lord is the great deliverer. And when you call on Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and you put your faith in Him, He responds. He forgives, He delivers, He redeems, and you are delivered from a strong enemy that sinful nature that wears you down, keeps you down, keeps you separated from God, the Lord will give you victory over that thing. Uh, and it says, I like how it says, they're talking about the enemy, for they were too strong for me. You know, sin is so strong and has such a grip on us that we cannot overcome it without God delivering us. In other words, you can't save yourself. You cannot forgive yourself. You cannot redeem yourself, deliver yourself. Uh, you must seek and trust in the deliverer, the redeemer who can come and help us because the enemy is too strong. Sin is too strong. Satan is too strong. We need help. We need help. And there are a lot of people out there don't get saved because of their stinking pride. It's true. They think that they can do it. I'm a man or I'm a bow man. And I, I'm an adult, I'm a grown-up, and I don't need anybody. I can overcome this. But that is anti-Bible, folks. That's not biblical, okay? We are too weak to overcome our own sin. You cannot do it. To overcome sin, to get rid of sin, the only way that you can do it 
is through Jesus Christ, the great forgiver, deliverer, redeemer, the only one that can help. Okay, so seek him and he will give you victory over your enemy. He will give you victory over sin. And folks, that sin that is too strong to, to overcome, he can help you defeat it. Because he already defeated it on the cross when he died for it. You just need to trust that he already won the victory and you will be part of his family. What? All right. Well, that is... I said what? Yeah, I know. I was ignoring it. What? That's all you we're going to do You today. gave me that eyeball. Well, I didn't give you any eyeball. No, I know. I was just being silly. That's all that we got for today, guys. So we made it through verse 19. I'm still awake. I know. Once you, once you eat, though, you're crazy. Been up since 2 a.m. I could run a mile Till he in, eats. in sections. And then he's going to be like this. So I'm going to go feed this man. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for joining us. We will be back next week, Lord willing, and mm -hmm. continue with chapter 18. It might take us through the whole next weekend to get through the whole thing. So we got about 30 verses left. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of good stuff in it. I hope you're enjoying it. So anyway, with that being said, are you ready? Yes. Lord, thank you for tonight. And Lord, thank you for the difference that you make in our lives. Uh, I pray for everyone in the group tonight, uh, folks that are going through troubles, Lord, I pray that you would help. I pray that they tonight with faith would call on you for help. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I pray that you would truly bless and straighten out situations and lift up hearts and, and truly help people to keep their eyes on you. And I pray that you would uh, help us all to truly just be refreshed and revived. Lord, we need you. Lord, if there's someone out there tonight and they're not truly a believer, they've been studying the Bible. They know a lot of facts but they don't know a savior yet and they don't know for sure if they die tonight, they'd be in heaven. I pray that you would really help them to see their need for Christ and that tonight they would truly repent of their sin, turn from sin, turn to Jesus as the only one who could forgive them. And I pray that they would trust Jesus Christ as their Lord and personal savior and be born again. I pray for their salvation tonight. Lord, I pray that you would give everyone in the group a wonderful night a wonderful week, and I pray that we would all be back in our place next week as we continue this song. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. All right, everyone, thank you very much for joining us. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really been a good thing to think about before we go into our week that God is there and ready to jump in and help us if we need it. So mm -hmm. I, I like how you prayed. So you'll have a good week, and Lord, we'll see you next time. Bye. Good night, Bye. folks.